Technician A says a steel piston should be cleaned with sandpaper to remove rust. Technician B says brake assembly fluid or clean brake fluid should be used to lubricate the caliper pistons before installing in the caliper. Who is right? B only. Brake assembly fluid or clean brake fluid is the best fluid to use when assembling a caliper. Technician A is wrong because care should be taken when cleaning steel pistons. Use crocus cloth to remove any surface staining. Do not use sandpaper, emery cloth, or any other substance that may remove or damage the chrome surface finish. Two technicians are explaining how to service an aluminum metal matrix composite alloy rotor. When resurfacing is not used, Technician A says servicing these rotors is slightly different from cast iron rotors. Technician B says you must remove the dark transfer layer on the rubbing surface anytime the rotor is removed. Who is right? Of only. Technician A is right because these rotors are serviced slightly different from cast iron rotors. Technician B is wrong because dark transfer layer on the rubbing surface does not harm rotor performance and should not be removed unless the rotor needs to be machined due to being warped. The front rotor needs to be replaced so the caliper must be removed. What should you do with the caliper after removing the retaining bolts? Hang it on a piece of wire. Hanging the caliper on a piece of wire preserves the brake line and puts it out of the way for the repair without disturbing the hydraulic system. All of the other choices are not appropriate or correct. The disassembly of a caliper is being described. Technician A says that after piston removal and a thorough cleaning and inspection, a new square cut o ring should be installed in the groove of the caliper bore. Technician B says the caliper piston is lubricated with clean transmission fluid and then pushed into the caliper bore. Who is right? Of only, Technician A states the standard procedure used by all manufacturers. Technician B is wrong because you lubricate the caliper piston with clean brake fluid not transmission fluid. On a car with single piston floating caliper disc brakes. The disc brake pad between the caliper piston and the rotor is badly worn. The other brake pad is slightly worn. Technician A says excessive rotor runout could be the cause. Technician B says insufficient clearance between the pads and caliper slider could be the cause. Who is right?
be only. Insufficient clearance between the pads and caliper slider causes the slider not to move and only applies one brake pad causing only that pad to wear. Technician A is wrong because excessive rotor runout will cause brake pulsations with no effect on wear. Two technicians are discussing the machining of a brake rotor. Technician A says OEM original equipment manufacturers like GM and others prefer the off-car form of rotor machining. Technician B says to check that the rotor is mounted correctly. Loosen the retaining nut, turn the rotor one half turn 180 degrees and retighten the nut and make another scratch cut. Who is right? B only, Technician B is correct because this is the correct process for on or off car machining. Technician A is wrong because OEMs prefer the on car form of rotor machining. The front rotor thickness variation parallelism is being measured. Technician A says you use a feeler gauge to make the measurement. Technician B says a dial indicator is used to make the measurement. Who is right? Neither A nor B both technicians are wrong. A special micrometer or digital readout rotor micrometer is used, which is an accurate tool when measuring a rotor. Both fractional inches and metric millimeters are generally available. Two technicians are discussing how to remove a caliper piston. Technician A says to use compressed air. Technician B says to use a large C clamp. Who is right? of only, use extreme care when removing a caliper piston using compressed air. The pressure applied can force the piston out of the caliper with tremendous force. A vehicle with four-wheel disc brakes has a brake squeal. Technician A says a defective proportioning valve could be the cause. Technician B says disc brake squeal is often caused by movement of the disc brake pad during braking. Who is right? B only. Disc brake squeal is often caused by movement of the disc brake pad during braking. To reduce a disc brake squeal, all mating surfaces of the brake should be clean and lubricated. Always use OEM recommended clips and anti-squeal shims. To further reduce noise, do not machine a disc brake rotor more than absolutely necessary. Technician A is wrong because the proportioning valve only affects brake lockup and is not used on four-wheel disc brakes only on disc drum combinations.